Welcome to Face to Face. Today, we are going to talk about my the favorite organization in Boston, Saheli. We have with us today Saheli co-executive director Divya Chaturvedi and a long-time volunteer and counselor at Saheli, Rita Sah. Divya, welcome to our uh, studio. Thank Rita, you. again, welcome. Thank you, Padaji. And uh, I have been involved with Saheli from day one. Yes. Love this organization and also the work which Saheli does. And we're going to also talk about what Saheli does as well as uh, upcoming Nirvaya fundraiser for Saheli. But before uh, we start our conversation, I just want to tell a couple of things about Saheli with my own experience mm -hmm. is that today as the Indian American community grows here, there are a lot of challenges and issues faced by the community. Domestic violence, abuse, problems with teenage children, spouses, and also now new issues coming up that are dealing with elders and seniors who are coming from India. There are so many challenges faced by this uh, our community. And Saheli has put all these issues on the map. Not only they have put these issues on the map, but they are also doing their best to help each one in from all these categories. So we're going to talk today to our guests with all these issues and uh, and see how we can help Saheli with their annual fundraiser later this year. Again, so Rita, let's start with you. Uh, off the camera, we're talking about all these issues you outlined. So let's hear it from you, that what are the, some of the big issues and which they are growing in the community. Exactly. Thank you, Pidraji, for having us here sure. um, at uh, Indian England News. You are a great supporter and we really love. Thank and you. the reason Sahiri has been in existence for the last 23 years because of the support from all the community leaders mm -hmm. and our community has been there for us. So we are really thanking our community for being there for us. Sure. Um, so one of the main issue, uh, one of the first thing I do want to talk about that anybody who needs help at Saheli, they can call us. It is 100% confidential. Um, nobody else in the community knows because sometimes people are afraid uh, to talk about it because we have a small community and we they are saying, oh, somebody else in the community is going to find out. And we want to assure everybody that it is 100% confidential. Nobody else except the person you are working with knows about your issue and um, and the Sahili helps you understand your options. So you don't have to leave the abusive environment if you don't want to because of the children or because of whatever your reasoning is. You can always call us and understand your options. So that's and the everything is confidential. 100% confidential. Perfect. So that's the one thing, first thing I want everybody to be aware of. The second, I'm sorry, I just yeah. want to add that um, when someone comes um, to Saheli for help, uh, we work with that person. Yeah. So what we, what we try and do is find the best options for the person. So whatever works for the person, we, we try and, you know, do that. So there's never an imposition of any viewpoint or any, you know, action on a person. It's, it's totally up to the person, you know, we just provide all the options. It's up to them what actions they need to take and we support them throughout. I mean, I was just when you were talking off the camera about... Uh, that how you have a grant for people to seek who are seeking uh, employment, how you have grant for housing. So it's yeah. amazing. So I just want you to elaborate one by one sure. quickly. Yes. So let's start, start with one of uh, the top issues we have seen last 10 years. Um, the top issue is we have a transnational abandonment. We have many cases where the women um, and kids who are living in Boston area were taken back to their home countries, could be India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Uh, and then uh, they were left there and taken their green card or passports or um, H-4 visa or whatever and the abuser did came back here and they call on us saying how do I come back because they do find us on internet or sure. so we help them understand their options if they have a financial issue or financial resources really then uh, we can help them connect with Indian consulate to get their visa and passports and USCIS. So we can help them understand their option if they are financially. And just yes, their number is increasing. Their number is very much yeah. increasing. So that's a, one of the issue. The other one is we do see a domestic violence survivor anywhere from one year marriage 
to 30 years marriage. So we have seen all the age span, all the socioeconomic status, somebody who has a millions of dollars and somebody who has like zero dollar. Mm. So Sahili really helps them um, with the $250 emergency fund. If they come to us today, say, I don't have anything, I need money. First thing we do is we do help them with $250 emergency fund, food and clothing for them and their children. So they at least get basic uh, needs met. And then we help them understand their housing option. We help them understand um, that immigration or family uh, lawyer. We have a free half an hour consulting uh, with the family lawyer as well as uh, immigration lawyer. So they can come anytime. Every two weeks we have a lawyer coming into our office. And they can come and do free half an hour consulting, no cost to them. So that's a one big option that many of our survivors are looking for. So those survivors <coughs> cases are also increasing, right? Yeah, right huge, huge number of... Um, because I mean, that every anything from physical abuse, financial abuse to emotional abuse, um, and, uh, and familial abuse. Familial. Yes, so the yes, community I'm sometimes the abuse comes from the family, not not really from the partner, mm -hmm. uh, the husband, the spouse. It's, it may be family, you know, maybe in-laws or other members of the family that are. So, so I'll come back to you because yes. I won't continue. But just wanted to since. Um, so you have been at Saheli for about two years, three years? About a year now. About a year now, okay. Seems like a long time, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was volunteering with them. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so, so just in one year, when you came first, mm -hmm. and now you have worked for one year, were you surprised by the number of cases and type of cases, or this is what you were expecting? I was actually surprised. Mm -hmm. I was actually surprised. So one of the common misconceptions in the community is that we come here and we leave all these things back home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, these things are happening here and in, in numbers that actually are surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, even we are a big community, but, you know, we, we are not really huge in that sense for, mm -hmm. for you know, to justify some of the numbers. So it's, it's kind of heartbreaking to see that we are, have so many women who are struggling with abuse in this country. Many times it is led by just being, you know, the, the, the strains and stresses of, of immigrating to this country, sure. you know, your job being dependent on a person, having no family members many times, no friends, no family members, you know, the, the issues get, you know, es escalated and, uh, they, you know, they face problems, they have nowhere to turn to and that is where, you know, Saheli, they call Saheli and like Saheli being a friend, they will call us and, and we provide the support that they need. Excellent. Yeah. So now, coming back to you, so only you pointed out about the amendment in yeah, the country, yeah, yeah. And you talked about the survivors who need help of exactly. domestic violence. Exactly, so that's the one number. Sure. The second one is survivors who are leaving this country mm -hmm. and um, either they are working or they are on age 40 on visa. So that's uh, another um, whole uh, big uh, group where uh, because they were working back in their home country, making financial um, resources for the family, being a H4 dependent, they come here and they're not able mm -hmm. to have a financial resources. And they, they came here because the husband or the abuser um, has an H1 visa. But now the abuser thinks that all the money he's making is his money, not the her money. And that's where the whole um, the abuse starts. Mm -hmm. And then there is the children and all that. So we try to help H4 dependent understand their uh, immigration options like U visa. It was used to be U visa, you can get it in two years. Now it takes six years. Mm -hmm. So that's a really long time option. So we do help them understand that it is not a short option that they can stay in this country legally because it, when you apply for U visa, you can't go back to your home country. And if the survivor has an elderly parents and if she wants to go visit them, she can't do that. So we do have them understand that you have an option of um, either staying in this country for a long time without going back to India, or if you uh, have enough financial or if you have your job back home, then it might make more sense if you do get out of the abuse and go back to your old job, and then you will be financially stable in that country compared to here, because legal state with the mm -hmm. immigration um, issues happening in the country and all the rules and regulations are coming, it is getting harder and harder. 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 For H four uh, survivors to stay in yeah. this country. Now another thing is that uh, now it's as the Indian American or South Asian population is growing, and people are getting more settled and established here. They are bringing their in laws or parents from mm -hmm. India, and there is also some rising conflict or some issues there. Exactly, exactly. Right. So that's another uh, issue is uh, when there is three generation living in this country, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Elder people would like to have their own ways or because they have been used to living in their own ways and they would like to see how they can go out and meet other people and all that. 
but because they don't drive, they don't have any financial resources, it makes it harder for, especially Monday to Friday when the, the kids and their uh, grandchildren go to school and all that, it's harder for them to come out and do um, any of the activities. But for that, we have another organization called Friends of Indian Senior Citizen Organization mm -hmm. out of Burlington. So they do come to some of those activities and do that. But from there, as well as uh, understanding Saheli, they reach out to us. Just last week, one woman came to us who um, talked to us for about two hours. She was crying nonstop. And uh, one of the things she told me was, I've given all 90% of my assets to my daughter-in-law and my son and I don't know what to do now because he had a apartment back in India that she had got, given it to their names because he thought she would stay with them permanently. Two weeks ago, her daughter-in-law gave her ultimatum, either you leave this house or um, I'm gonna be getting a divorce from your son. And mm -hmm. this is one of the things I'm seeing more and more. More and more, yeah. And uh, there is a lot of physical abuse, there is a lot of uh, emotional abuse where she has been facing for the last two years. This was like really at the last point, she came out to us and said, how can you help us? So we did give her three options. She can either go into the public housing, but she's on green card for three years. So she has to wait two more years before she can go into public housing. Mm -hmm. Another option is she does have some pension coming in, enough to, for her to live in a other home in back in their home country in big city like Mumbai or Delhi. So I told her there is an option you can live with your own uh, population back in your home country. But one thing she was concerned about was medical bills because here the medical is free for her. Mm -hmm. In the home countries it would not be. Mm -hmm. But uh, she does have her name in one of the real estate. So I said you can always sell that real estate and have enough money, put it away for your medical bills. So we did talk about all the options and left it up to her to decide what is the best for her. Yeah. But that is one of the things we are seeing a lot more. Where, and this is one thing I'll tell every single elder out there, please don't give your assets to your children until you leave this earth. Sure. So please, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, so that's yeah. really important because sometimes they do get emotionally uh, entangled and if the son or daughter wants to buy a house saying, yeah, I have a hundred thousand, you can use that money. I'm going to be staying with you the rest of your life anyway. But they don't realize that if there is no money, yeah, absolutely. There won't be anybody who's going to be taking care of them. So that's one of the things we are seeing for elder. Another huge issue we are seeing is teenagers. As we know, because we have raised teenage, I have raised teenagers in this country, it is not easy. Uh, and I know you have done too. I have one right now. Yeah, yes. exactly. Then <laughs> we still have one, yes. <laughs> So yeah, I've raised two teenager daughters in this country. And uh, it is not easy as uh, being a mother of teenagers, trying to help them balance between home life and the school life and helping them understand the best of both worlds. Because if we can really learn the best thing from the mainstream culture and best thing from our culture, we can really make a great life. Sure. So that's one of the things we are helping the families learn. And that's why we do some parenting workshop. We do healthy relationship workshop. We have a support group for our survivors. So we have support groups in Burlington, Quincy, and Worcester. So any of our survivors or non-survivors can come and join and learn about healthy relationship because one of the things we want to see our community living safe and healthy lives. That's our mission and vision. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we do that. Excellent. Now, uh, uh, I think Rita really pointed out all these issues and how. The, so you tell us a little bit about how Saheli works with these issues. So um, we actually, well, I like to say that we uh, we are there throughout. Um, you know, person who needs help from the beginning uh, to the end. So we help them. So we kind of a safety net a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of the emergency assistance that we take. And you also have now full place office too in Bangladesh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we have an office. So when someone comes, and we've had cases where uh, you know we've had women being abandoned at the airport mm -hmm. uh, with no money, not even you know buy clothes, uh, food. So we help with emergency assistance so that they can get meet their basic needs. Then we provide all the options. Like Rita has pointed out, several options. We discuss all the options from housing to job to immigration, to family law, you know, what are the best steps for them. And we hold their hand literally throughout through this process. And even when they are in a better place, we help them, you know, we, we get volunteers to help them with uh, English and, uh, you know, resume and uh, career tips, you know, all of those things. So we, we kind of provide, you know, all, all, all kinds of services. Uh, and with all of those services, 
the one main thing we do is provide emotional and psychological mm. support. Yes, really. Because, yes, really. because all of them, when they come, when, you know, and, and earlier I just mentioned that many of them don't have any other person to speak to. Mm. And we become their, you know, emotional support. We, you know, we hear them, we cry with them, we listen to them. Even with the elderly who, uh, people who come to us, sometimes they just need, a, you know, a person to listen to them. They may not have somebody who will listen to them. Even when a young person comes to us, sometimes they need someone to listen to them and say that, okay, what you're saying and thinking is, you know, is, is right, you know, is validated. Um, so we, we provide that support. Uh, many of our uh, services, we provide domestic violence, you know, the emergency um, uh, assistance, uh, one-time assistance of $250. Uh, we have housing. Uh, that we provide, we can help help them pay rent. Maybe you know, first month's uh, deposit. Up to thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, maybe sometimes even moving costs. You know, we help them with that. Um, and then we have economic empowerment funds. So once you know, now when we're exploring options, okay, so I don't know how to drive. Mm -hmm. So how do I get from one point to another? Now that I have to fend for myself, so we'll help them with get a driver's license or help them get like a you know medical coding or medical certification somewhere where they can work in a doctor's office or um, you know some other home health home, yeah. he home health so, you know some other uh, kinds yeah. of certification we and we've seen that we have many uh, women who come here who are actually doctors in their country like full doctor they've gone through the whole experience and been a full fledged doctor in their country now they are here and they have to start again but they have to take the exams and we help them take those exams so we don't say the patients come to say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we have yeah. we have uh, so we so it's like we, we provide like i mentioned before we work with the person determine what the best options are the best course of action is and we help them uh, you know achieve that uh, achieve them through our means, uh, which are of course not unlimited. We have limited funding. We'll uh, you know uh, reach out to the community, community members, uh, anyone who can who is willing to help. Now talking about help, first thing I want to tell you that you know we at Indian Indian News we are always behind Sahili, and in any way we can help, Thank we are you. always ready, and we will. And we really appreciate uh, and we are here because of the uh, support from absolutely. you. So, so we, we really have appreciate full commitment yeah. from us. Anytime anything you need from yeah. us. And it's really touching, and I'm really touched that by all the things you are doing. So now my question is that we have written some articles in the past that Sahili have got some funding from the state, right? the state government for some, yeah. some loans, etc. But it's still to support all these massive organizations. Uh, you depend on the donations okay. and the charity donations from various yeah. community and groups like that. And you are having um, uh, an event coming up. Uh, On December 8th. On December. So can you, both of you can talk about yeah. a little bit about that? So we have our uh, fundraiser which is called Nirbhaya. Mm -hmm. um, it's on December 8th uh, from 3 o'clock at Burlington Marriott. Um, and we invite the entire community to of course come and support Saheli. Uh, we do it once every two years mm -hmm. given the size of our organization and you know how much effort it takes to actually uh, do a fundraiser. Um, so going back to, uh, you know, you asked about uh, state. Uh, we have some funding from the uh, Department of Public Health that actually supports the staff members, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, domestic violence advocates who actually work with the people who call, call for help. Uh, so whatever funds we raise, they all go for our economic empowerment, our housing, our uh, you know direct uh, service to our survivors. Direct service to our survivors. So mm -hmm. the more funds we raise, we are able to give more, more help, more help. Uh, to the women. And Rita had you know so rightly said that. The wait time for a U visa EAD now is getting a little bit longer, so we do support women. You know, uh, sometimes it's hard for a woman to go back home and her children are here. Sure. The children are being raised here. You don't want to displace the kids. You don't want, you know, you want to tra traumatize them. So then, option is to stay here, wait for the visa, and we kind of support a woman in in that action. So whatever funds we raise from Nirvaya go towards all these services uh, and many other. How, how much support do you really get in terms of finances and charity from the, the Indian or South Asian community? So for our gala last year, I think our net uh, amount 2017. was about yeah, 2017 was about 60,000. Mm -hmm. So that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. This year our goal is about 150,000 mm -hmm. because our need has been increasing and there is a lot more complicated cases that are coming through us. Mm -hmm. One other thing we do forgot to uh, add was uh, um, in last six months, we have started working with the Arabic population because mm -hmm. uh, uh, recently Arabic person reached out to us and there was no Arabic services in okay. the Western area. 
So that is another thing we want our viewer to know that if you know of any Arabic survivors, have them come out to um, Saheli because we have an Arabic speaking TV advocate who can help them. And we have about eight or nine uh, Arabic speaking survivors who we are helping. So it is a really a wonderful way of, because our goal is never to turn anybody away. Yeah. It doesn't make if it's uh, any, like we have a, in our support group, we have a Chinese person, we have a Caucasian person, we have a Moroccan person. So we have many different countries who are participating in our support groups. So. Imagine if we have about 70, 80,000 uh, uh, Indians in this area, and if every family gives just $100, and one thing I want to add is e every dollar that is given to Saheli helps someone right here in Massachusetts right, yeah. and that's a big thing because your money directly touches you know someone's life right here you know it's not going anywhere else it's right here in Massachusetts helping you know someone from your community you know to survive to you know do better to provide a good life for them uh, and again I, mean, I would like to say that all, all of us immigrants who are here, many of them must have gone through some sort of turmoil and experience these people are suffering. Yeah. And we have to help them. Exactly. When we came up, there was maybe not that type of support, but now there is a network and all. Wonderful. And that's why Saheli is a fantastic uh, network yeah. and a support group to do that. And uh, thanks all for helping the community. And we're looking forward to helping you and working with you for Nirvaya. Uh, and hopefully, you, instead of raising only hundred fifty thousand dollars, you raise point one point five million dollars. That would be that wonderful. Yes. Absolutely. Because our three to five years goal yeah. is to get a shelter for the survivors. Sure, absolutely. So there is a survivor for most of the community, um, other communities in the Boston area. For South Asian services, we don't have a shelter, so we do provide housing assistance by providing hotels or whatever for our survivors, mm -hmm. but we, our three to five years goal is to get a shelter for these our survivors. Yeah. So, well, you know, yeah. housing, I'm sorry, I just want to add, housing is a big problem, uh, and by providing a, a safe space for, for our South Asian survivors where they can, you know, have access to their own food, practice, you know, their own religion, uh, it would be a big service uh, to the community, and yeah. that's, that's our, our, our uh, long-term plan. Excellent. And I think, you know, we have been a lot of viewers and readers in our community, mm -hmm. A lot of them have a lot of money. They do a lot of great charity work mm -hmm. anyway. All they needed to just write a million dollar check to Saheli and we <laughs> that would be that. wonderful. And hope somebody listens to this and, and helps Saheli out. That'd be great. But thank, thank you. Awesome. We really appreciate thank your you so support, Umenraji. Sure. Because uh, the, without community, Saheli would not be here for 23 years later because yes. we hear from many of the across the nation. We do um, work with the other uh, Saheli organization kind of across the nation, there's about 40 of them and, and they too are surprised that we were able to be existence without public funding for 17 years, sure. 18 years. Sure. Because And also, you know, I mean, I think that the biggest contribution according to me for Saheli has made is that it has put the domestic violence issue on the table, yeah. where everybody is comfortable talking about it. Exactly. Before nobody, you know, people saw that, they went through that, nobody talked about it. But now I can sit down on camera with you and talk about all this. Exactly. See the big yeah. issue. One other thing I do want um, bringing up the domestic violence at the table is Saheli's goal is to bring family together. Right. When any survivor comes to us, our first goal is can we offer you a couple's counseling? Can we offer you family counseling? Can we offer you even in-laws counseling? We are here to bring family together. We do care about our families. We want our families to stay together. But if there is a life and death crisis for our survivor, then we do encourage them to call 911 to save themselves and their children. Yeah. But anytime, please, I mean, we do encourage anybody in the family, men, women, children, elders, please come to Saheli. We have free counseling. There's no cost to you. Please come and try to save your families before it's too late. Excellent. Rita, thank you very much uh, for coming to our studio and your time. And we are looking forward to uh, helping Nirvaya, and I'll be definitely there. Thank you. And uh, I also urge the community to come and help say This is a great cause anybody can think of. Divya, thank you very much thank for you your so time. Thank you so much for your time.